The games are coming thick and fast for the Reds with our next match against Toulouse in the Europa League edging closer. In today's video we'll discuss some exciting transfer news ahead of the January after a recent reveal, whilst also rounding up all the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well. Before we do get into today's video, as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Lose in Town have issued a statement regarding the chanting from a large vocal section of their supporters that mocked the Hillsborough disaster and poverty. Luton Town's statement and apology to anyone offended by the chants comes shortly after the Football Association released a statement outlining their stance and the involvement of the police. The chanting with the songs including ones which refer to Hillsborough tragedy and also poverty was called out live on Sky Sports by Jamie Carragher during the 1-1 draw and subsequently by the national media. The Premier League and FA announced new measures to tackle tragedy chanting last summer, including more power for stadium bans and potential criminal prosecution. It follows a Tottenham fan from being banned from attending football matches for three years after being found guilty of mocking the Hillsborough disaster. Similarly, a Manchester United fan was banned for four years following the FA Cup semi-final last season. Luton's statement in full reads, Luton Town Football Club is saddened by reports of inappropriate chanting towards Liverpool supporters during yesterday's Premier League fixture at Kenilworth Road. The atmosphere inside the stadium was electric for the most part of a assaulting game, in which Rob Edwards' side come close to pulling off one of the results of the season. While we do not wish to dampen the atmosphere at our home ground in any way, we are extremely disappointed that a small number of supporters saw the occasion with chants that may be interpreted as being in relation to tragedies that have affected Liverpool in the past. The club condemns any kind of chanting that knowingly seeks to divide and our safety and security team launched an internal investigation at the earliest opportunity. What has quickly become evident is that a number of people may have taken part without knowledge that the words used were in relation to Hillsborough tragedies and we see to root persuading supporters not to repeat these chants in the future is free communication and education. On the basis, we are reviewing CCTV media footage from the match and will seek to witness the identity and individuals who may have taken part. Any perpetrators could face stadium bans and potential criminal prosecution. The eyes of the world are upon us in the Premier League, which we are all learning quickly to adapt to, and we have to remind our supporters that you are all ambassadors of the club, and it's your responsibility to behave according to the rules of the ground. This includes understanding the songs that cannot be sung in the line with Love Football Protect the Game campaign. 97 Liverpool fans died as a result of a crush at Hillsborough in 1989. An inquest jury ruled in 2016 that they were unlawfully killed amid a number of police errors. According to a report earlier this year, more than a quarter of children in Luton are living in relative poverty. Liverpool have joined Tottenham in the race for Bournemouth star Lloyd Kelly ahead of the January transfer window, according to Football Insider. The 25-year-old is out of contract on the south coast at the end of the season. Jurgen Klopp's side are in the market for a versatile defender ahead of the mid-season window, and Kelly has been long on their radar. The ex-Bristol City star can play both centre-back and left-back. It is believed there is a huge interest in Kelly from elite clubs in the Premier League and in Europe with Serie A giants AC Milan among those keeping close tabs on the situation. A well-placed source has told us that Bournemouth could now be forced to accept a January offer for Kelly or risk him walking away from the club for free next summer. The defender has made eight appearances across all competitions so far this season, with a series of injuries limiting his availability. He wore the captain's armband in Bournemouth's two most recent Premier League fixtures. Kelly joined the Cherries in 2019 for a reported £13 million and has gone on to make 124 appearances for the South Coast side. Ariola's side have picked up just six points from their opening 11 Premier League games this term. Virgil van Dijk says Liverpool players have created a safe space for Luis Diaz in the days since his father was kidnapped from Colombia. The 26-year-old came off of the bench in the 83rd minute of the team's 1-1 draw of Luton on Sunday and scored a dramatic equaliser deep into added time. It was his first appearance as his father Luis Manuel Diaz was abducted in the town of Barracanas in October 28th. The striker was absent for Liverpool's win over Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth but marked a sensational return to action by heading in Harvey Elliott's cross five minutes into stoppage time at Kenilworth Road. The group responsible for the abduction, the National Liberation Army, has asked for security guarantees in exchange for his father's release. Following the game against Luton, Van Dijk said he's been training with us, knowing that it's fresh, what's going on. He feels like he's been in the safe space with us, so it helps him. We're here for him. We mentioned it last week, it's absolutely horrible situation. Hopefully there will be a solution. We'll be here for him and everybody should support him. Hopefully it will be sorted as soon as possible. Liverpool had looked set to fall to a shock defeat before Diaz's late intervention, 
Falling behind 10 minutes from time for a goal from Luton substitute Chong. He's still disappointed because we also wanted a win, said Van Dijk. There's a lot of emotions in his head. It must have been and meant to be and that he has scored. I'm happy for him, but hopefully we can get his father back as soon as possible. You can't imagine it. That's the scary part. The only thing we can do is hope they will find him as safe and sound and they get him back to his family. When it's happened, it was a shock to everyone. We spoke about it and it should give us extra motivation. He doesn't want us to suffer from what he's going through. He wants us to take fuel from it. In front of a raucous home support, the visitors struggled to break down Luton for long periods as they sought to win that would put them second in the Premier League. Darwin Nunes in particular was guilty of wasteful finishing when chances came hitting the bar in the first half before conspiring to balloon an effort from three yards out after the break. Van Dyke continued, I don't think it was down to the atmosphere. We had the first chance after half an hour, score one and it's a completely different game. We didn't and they need the opportunity. The results here this season have been very small margins. That's down to how they play, they defend compact and solid. I respect that, but we could have made it a lot easier. While Liverpool needed a stoppage time header to earn a point at Luton, Thursday's opponents were on the receiving end of a late blow themselves. The Reds will travel to Toulouse for the first time since the Champions League qualifier all the way back in 2007, with a double header being the only previous encounter between the clubs until this season. The French side currently sit 14th in Ligue 1, but the table could have looked a lot rosier for them if they had not surrendered a lead in the final game before Liverpool's visit. Delinga fired the host in front shortly after the interval, the same man who equalised for Carlos Montino's novel side at Anfield two weeks ago. With just seven minutes remaining of normal time, Toulouse were on course for a vital three points, which would have taken them all the way up to seventh in the league after 11 games. A late brace from Mohamed Bayo saved the day for the visitors, Le Havre, including a 96th minute winner to break TFC's hearts at the death. It leaves Toulouse hovering just one point above the relegation zone, and put some dangerously close to being dragged into a scrap at the rear end of the table. Novel made just two changes on the side that were fresh 3-0 away to Montepila the previous weekend, with the goalkeeper back for a midfield three all remaining in the same 4-3-3 shape. It was the same number of tweaks to the side that were beaten 5-1 by the Reds three days earlier, but on that occasion the Ligue 1 side opted for a back five at Anfield. Delinga remains a threat for Thursday, with the forward currently sitting at the club's top goalscorer this season on five goals in all competitions. Toulouse currently looks set to battle it out with Union saint gilles for second place in the Europa League Group E, as they sit level with the Belgian side on four points at the halfway stage. Liverpool fans, what do you make of the upcoming game against Toulouse, and do you think we'll bounce back? Let me know your score predictions down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.